So you may have asked yourself before, why do older movies look better in 4K than newer movies? I'm going to try and use my experience as a cinema projectionist and my film and movie collection here to try and explain this to you guys in a simple and easy process that you hopefully will understand. Hey everyone, my name is Rob. Welcome to my YouTube channel called The Movie Vault where I want to help advise and inform you guys about 4K, Blu-ray and DVD collecting. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Let's get into today's topic. Why do older movies look better on 4K than newer movies? First of all, let's talk about some film formats here. I have been a cinema projectionist since 2002, so well over 18 years at this stage I have worked in a cinema and a projection environment handling all sorts of film. So the film formats we're going to talk about for today's video are 16mm film, 35mm film, 70mm film and IMAX film also known as 15-70mm film. Let's talk about the restoration process and how that happens. Before we get into this, I do want to mention that cameras and lenses do play a huge part in this process, uh, which could spawn a whole other video. So we're not gonna kind of deal with that in today's video. We need to first look at what is the end deliverable or the end product. Are we going to 4K UHD disc? Are we going to Blu-ray? Are we going to a streaming service like Netflix? So that kind of sets up the workflow, our end deliverable, what do we want, ultimately want as the end goal of all of this restoration. So if we're dealing with an older movie that has been shot on 16, 35, 70 or IMAX film, we're gonna take that original camera negative and scan it at the highest possible resolution. All these films, especially 16 and 35 mil, can be scanned at resolutions up to 12K. The higher the resolution, the higher the scan, the better and more detail you're gonna get in that image quality. What we also see happening now is future proofing your content. A lot of people nowadays are shooting at 8K, delivering at 4K and under 1080p as well for online streaming services. This way you can go back to your original source format or your original negative, which will always be 8K. So that's what we're gonna see a lot of filmmakers doing these days. But let's talk about the process of actually restoring a movie from a 35 mil film negative. So there are many different types of scanning machines available. There is an ARRI scan, a Scanity, and a scan station, just to name a few here. There is two different ways we can take this Private Benjamin 35mm trailer, which we're gonna pretend is a camera negative here, and we want to get this 35mm negative to a 4K UHD disc. So how are we going to do that? There is two scanning options here. We could scan at 4K for just the area that we want to use for the 4K UHD disc. The other option we have here is to overscan this image at 6.5K, which will give us the entire width and height of the film frame, including the perforations or the sprocket holes on the side as you'll see here so what we can then do is crop that 6.5k scan down to 4k we could use an image stabilization if for some reason the camera negative was unstable or unsteady we could do a lot more things like that with the overscan at 6.5k and just as a comparison 70 mil film or imax 15 70 mil film you'd want to scan those sort of negatives at resolutions between 8 to 12k so after we have completed our scan here, we're gonna convert that scan digitally to what's called a digital intermediate or a DI. I'm just gonna give you guys a brief explanation here. Digital intermediate or a DI is a motion picture finishing process which classically involves digitizing a motion picture and manipulating the color and other image characterizations. That's a brief description of what a digital intermediate is, which is perfect here because now what we're gonna do is we have either a 4K or a 6.5K scan of our private Benjamin 35 mil negative here from the camera. So let's say we make a 4K digital intermediate, which is gonna give us a 4K workflow here. So we're gonna be able to, we're gonna to have to recolor grade this as you can see here, because this trailer has faded here, unfortunately over the years. So we're gonna recolor grade that, usually involving a, the director of the movie or the cinematographer. The more people involved from the original shoot of the film, the better so as we can get that scan 4K scan and restoration looking exactly as it was intended at the time the film was shot. 
So from this 4K digital intermediate here, we're going to be able to deliver a 4K UHD disc, a 1080p Blu-ray or a DVD as desired. We can also, if this movie was going to be shown in a cinema or a theater, we can also create a DCP, which is basically a hard drive. We could export a 4K DCP or a 2K DCP, whatever we want. We have that 4K digital intermediate from the 4K scan source of the movie. Ultimately, the scanning resolution of a 35mm film negative here, we should be best serving the presentation or how the content is going to be consumed. What is the end format? What's the end result? Are we going to be shown in a cinema? Are we going to be creating a 4K UHD disc? Are we going to be online streaming services such as Netflix and Amazon Prime, these kind of things? We need to get the most detail possible out of the original source material. That's the whole purpose behind the scan. I wanted to discuss some movies that were shot on 16mm just as a reference here for this video. So 2010's Black Swan, directed by Darren Aronofsky, was shot on 16mm film cameras and DSLRs, would you believe? From this, they made a 2K digital intermediate, and then that was ultimately a blow up to a 35mm film print that was shown in theaters. An interesting note about Black Swan is that because some of those subway scenes were shot with DSLR cameras which feature heavy and lossy compression, the maximum workflow would be a 2K max because that DSLR footage is only shot at 1080p and is not going to look great once you blow it up anything higher than 2K resolution. Christopher Nolan's following from 1998, his first feature length movie, was shot on 16mm film, which then went to a 4K digital intermediate by Criterion Collection, as you can see here on this Blu ray. From there, it was a blow up to 35mm when it was shown in theaters, and that 4K digital intermediate was then exported at 1080p for this Criterion Collection Blu ray release. The Hurt Locker from 2008, directed by Catherine Bigelow, was also shot on 16mm film, which was then scanned into a 2K digital intermediate, which once again was a blow up to 35mm film for its theatrical release. Jackie 2016 was also shot on 16mm film cameras, which was then scanned and converted to a 2K digital intermediate, but again was ultimately a blow up to 35mm film prints to be shown in theatres. Darren Aronofsky makes our list again here with The Wrestler from 2008, which was again shot on 16mm film, was then scanned and converted to a 2K digital intermediate, but again was a blow up to 35mm film prints for its theatrical run back in 2008. Let's talk about some movies that were originally shot on 35mm film and restored and released on 4K UHD. Like for example, 1988's Beetlejuice, originally shot on 35mm film, which was then converted and scanned to a 4K digital intermediate this year 2020. Tim Burton's Batman from 1989 was also originally shot on 35mm film and converted to a 4K digital intermediate back in 2019. The Blues Brothers from 1980 was originally shot in 35mm film and converted to a 4K digital intermediate in 2020. Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, also from 1980, was originally shot on 35mm film and converted and scanned to a 4K digital intermediate in 2019. Jaws from 1975 was originally shot on 35mm film and scanned to a 4K digital intermediate in 2020. Ridley Scott's Alien from 1979 was also shot on 35mm film and scanned to a 4K digital intermediate for its restoration in 2019. John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978 was originally shot on 35mm film and was scanned and converted to a 4K digital intermediate for its restoration back in 2018. Let's talk about some movies that either were fully or partially shot with 65mm film cameras which are also known as 70mm film cameras or IMAX 15 70mm cameras as well. 2001 A Space Odyssey directed by Stanley Kubrick from 1968 was originally shot on 65mm film and was then scanned and converted to an 8K digital intermediate back in 2018 for this restoration. Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight from 2015 was also shot on 65mm film and converted to a 4K digital intermediate back in 2015. Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight from 2008 features scenes shot on IMAX 1570mm film and was then converted to a 4K digital intermediate in 2017. Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises from 2012 was also shot on 1570mm IMAX and was converted to a 4K digital intermediate in 2017 also. More recently, the documentary Apollo 11, released in 2019, featured some 16mm and 65mm film elements that were scanned to a 4K digital intermediate in 2019 for this documentary's release. Let's talk about some newer movies shot digitally and why they just don't compare to these older movies we've discussed already. 
Birds of Prey from 2020 was originally shot digitally at a 3.4K source camera, which was then upscaled to a 4K digital intermediate for release. An interesting note about Birds of Prey is that the digital cameras used do actually shoot at 4K resolution, but because the filmmakers chose to use anamorphic lenses, those lenses actually reduced the amount of sensor available to capture the image using those anamorphic scope lenses 2.39 to 1, which results in a 4K camera sensor only being able to capture a 3.4K image. Joker from 2019 had three different source material cameras that could shoot resolutions of 3.4K, 4.5K and 5.1K which were then converted to a 4K digital intermediate. The wonderful series The Haunting of Hill House which was shot for Netflix had a 6.5K source resolution which was then down converted to a 4K digital intermediate for release. Let's look at a couple of newer releases here that actually resulted in an upscale to get to a 4K UHD disc. Halloween from 2018 had an original source resolution of 2.8K which was then upscaled to 4K for this 4K UHD release. The Witch from 2015 also had a 2.8K source resolution which was also upscaled to 4K for this 4K UHD disc release. Rob Zombie's Tree from Hell from 2019 once again had a 2.8K source resolution which was also upscaled to 4K for this 4K UHD release. No matter what way you look at these newly shot digitally movies, a 2.8K source resolution is a blow up to 4K when it's released on a 4K UHD disc. 2K is not 4K. 35mm film can be scanned at 4K or 6.5K or 8K or 12K and we can then make a proper 4K UHD disc out of that. A 2K movie is always going to be a 2K movie. Even if you blow it up to 4K or downscale it to 1080p, you just can't get a higher resolution out of a 2K source. I will mention 2K source material would need an AI upscaler software that would result in a lossy 4K quality resolution. It can be done. But that's unfortunately why some of these newer movies I mentioned here feel a little bit underwhelming when you watch them on 4K. So how does all this movie shot on film, movie shot digitally, how does this affect us as collectors? I need to let you guys know to be aware of how the original source material was shot, what resolution was it? Was it shot on film? Was it shot digitally? Let's talk about this. It all depends on how you're consuming or viewing the content. Are you watching a 4K UHD disc on a 4K player with a 4K TV? If so, you're getting the highest resolution possible from these movies, depending, as I mentioned, some of these newly shot movies are a 2K upscale to 4K, so they're technically not 4K. You could be watching a Blu-ray disc on a Blu-ray player on a HD TV, which is fine. I have no problems with Blu-ray at all, and they're a great, great quality format. For an example here, Birds of Prey that I mentioned was shot at 3.4K and was technically a slight upscale to for the 4K UHD release. I opted to go for the Blu-ray here because this was shot at 3.4K. So when you take that 3.4K source footage downscaled to a 1080p disc, you're still going to see all that detail in there. The resolution is obviously not the same, but I believe the Blu-ray disc looks as good, maybe even on a par with the 4k disc because technically the movie wasn't shot in 4k sometimes these 4ks feel a little bit underwhelming when you watch them so i believe blu-ray may be the option for some of these movies that end up being a 4k upscale blu-ray might be the better option for you guys and also you're going to save some money buying the blu-ray here as well slightly cheaper on the 4k uhd disc that's technically not a 4k resolution disc Another way this affects our collecting is you may want to consider are you going to upgrade to a 4K setup in the future? I upgraded to a complete 4K setup, 4K TV, 4K Blu-ray player and a 4K amplifier receiver. So you, if you are going to consider upgrading to 4K in the future, you may want to look at if you want to kind of build a 4K movie collection now. There are some good deals where you can get a 4K release which features a 4K UHD disc, a Blu-ray and sometimes even a digital download code as well so if you purchase those movies now you are kind of future proofing some of your movie collection for when you do make the jump into a 4k setup 
So I just want you guys to be aware that some older movies do look fantastic on 4K and that's the whole point if they're scanned and restored properly like I have explained in this video. That's why these older movies look brilliant on 4K and sometimes these newer movies look that little bit underwhelming, look a little bit flat, they just don't look the same as older movies. So if you're able to get an older movie that was restored at 4K and you get the 4K UHD disc and you're watching on your 4K player on your 4K TV, you are seeing that movie at the highest possible quality available right now in 2020 as of making this video. So a quick cheat to find out if a movie was shot on film or if it was shot digitally is IMDB. If you go onto IMDB and you search for the movie you want to find out for, let's say for example, Jaws, if you scroll down and then you click into technical specs, it's going to tell you in there what the original cameras were, even the lenses sometimes, what the original negative format was and what sort of digital intermediate was used. So if you know a movie was shot on film and it has a 4K digital intermediate, that 4K UHD disc, chances are it's probably gonna look pretty decent. So that kind of wraps up my video here on why do older movies look better on 4K. I don't claim to be an expert in any of this, I just wanted to kind of use my experience as a cinema projectionist working with all these film formats for all over the last 18 years and try and explain this in a video in a way that hopefully you guys will appreciate and understand and sort of makes sense here in all the images and stuff that I've used to kind of explain this. Um, it's a really interesting topic. We could talk and have a whole video series and a whole podcast series about this 4K and why some stuff looks good and some stuff looks bad. And there's a lot of famous movies out there that were shot in 35mm and there's 4K and Blu-rays that just look terrible when the 4K restoration or 2K restoration, whatever your digital intermediate is, when that restoration isn't done properly, it can ruin the end result result, the final product, what we talked about at the start of the video, it can ruin that Blu-ray or that 4K UHD disc for us, the viewers and the consumers. There are a couple of other videos out there on this topic, but this is just how I kind of interpret the information and how I've worked with these film formats and just this is how I explain why older movies look better on 4K than newer movies. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments what you think, if this has all made sense, if you have learned anything from this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and as I mentioned at the start, you may want to consider hitting the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video. I have some other videos on 4K, my top 5 4K older films on disc I'm going to leave here and my top 5 newer movies on 4K disc I will leave here. Thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you on the next video.